Hi everyone, uh, I'm Romil, and today I'm going to tell you about Ekia, a system for continuous learning on resource-constrained edge devices. This is joint work with my colleagues at Microsoft, University of Chicago, and UC Berkeley. So video data is everywhere, from self-driving cars to traffic cameras. However, video is unstructured information. To extract value from videos, we need to process them and typically run a machine learning model. This is known as video analytics. So while video analytics is computationally expensive, there has been a recently growing interest in running these models at the edge. This is because of two primary reasons. First is privacy. Many video analytics applications are, operate on sensitive data, and many agencies are not willing to upload this data to public cloud providers. And the second is bandwidth to the cloud. Because video data is so dense, it requires provisioning expensive links to the cloud. These links are not always reliable and may often not be feasible, such as for self-driving cars or remote camera installations. So a, a typical edge video analytics setup looks like this. You, you have a set of cameras uh, which are pro producing video streams which you want to run analytics on. Then you have an edge box which has a shared pool of resources such as the four GPUs that you see here. And then each video stream running inference model on, uh, runs its inference model on this shared pool of resources uh, by providing the data to the edge box. However, because these inference models uh, are running in the resource-constrained environments, these are generally specialized lightweight versions of their larger counterparts. As I will now explain, using these lightweight models presents another challenge. So when these lightweight models are deployed uh, in the field, they're prone to something we call data drift, which is when live video data diverges significantly from the data the models were trained on. So when data drifts, the accuracy of these lightweight models deteriorates. One example of data, uh, data drift is shift in class distributions. So as you can see here on the left, I plot uh, the class distribution across uh, six data windows. You can think of each data window as one hour of uh, video segments. And on the right, I plot the inference accuracy of a model which was trained on window one. So as you can see, the window one was a vehicle heavy uh, class distribution. So the model was trained on a vehicle heavy class distribution. And then, so as you can see on the right, it achieves a higher accuracy when operating on window one. But when the incoming data distribution becomes pedestrian heavy, the accuracy of the model drops as you can see uh, in data window four. So as you saw, data drift is beyond our control and we need to develop systems that can handle data drift. So one solution is to adapt the compressed model by continuously retraining it on live incoming data. This is called continuous learning. And as, as you can see here in this plot, re, continuous retraining actually works. Um, in, the, in the same inference accuracy plot as I showed before, I now add another model which is continuously retrained on data from the previous retraining window. And as you can see, the continuously retrained model is able to sustain a higher mean inference accuracy. However, doing this retraining has an associated cost. It requires precious GPU time to train a model in parallel while inference is simultaneously running on the same GPU. This is even more challenging in resource-constrained environments because the GPUs are already running inference jobs from other video streams. In such environments, the retraining job must borrow resources from inference to complete retraining. However, this resource borrowing uh, causes inference jobs to uh, lose some of their accuracy. And this is because the inference jobs must now either stop, start dropping frames or they need to downsample their inputs to keep up with the line rate. Consider this example which demonstrates how retraining uh, affects inference jobs. We, we, start, we, we start an inference job at t equal to zero with 80% accuracy. At t equal to 20, I start a retraining job which runs in the background and takes resources from inference. Now, because these resources have been diverted from inference, the inference accuracy drops because the inference job is now dropping frames itself. At t equal to 100, the, uh, the retraining completes and the retrain model is loaded into inference accuracy and you see that slight increase in accuracy you see at the end. So this raises a natural question. How many resources do you actually need to do this retraining? 
So the resource demands of continuous learning actually depend on the chosen configuration for retraining. This configuration is the hyperparameters used to retrain the model. These hyperparameters can be uh, things like a number of layers to train, the data sampling rate, the learning rate, uh, the number of epochs, size of the last layer, and so on. And the choice of these configuration also affects the resource cost of training the model. For instance, if you train only the last few layers of a model, it is significantly faster than training a complete model, but you get a slightly lower accuracy in the end. This figure is a visual representation of this trade-off. Each orange point in the scatter plot represents a configuration of hyperparameters. On the x-axis, you have the resource cost in GPU time, and on the y-axis, you have the accuracy. If you look more closely, uh, the two configurations highlighted in blue circles present an opportunity for optimizing the retraining process. Instead of picking the configuration with the highest accuracy, it might be more optimal to pick the other configuration which gives a slightly lower accuracy but completes much faster. So to summarize thus far, edge devices use compressed models to do inference at the edge. These compressed models are subject to data drift, which reduces the accuracy of inference models. Data drift can be addressed using continuous learning, but continuous learning has costs which depend on the chosen configuration for retraining. In our work, we formulate this problem as a scheduling problem where the objective is to maximize the inf mean inference accuracy across all video streams in the current retraining window. And we constrain this objective with two constraints. First is the resource capacity constraint, which says that we should not oversubscribe our resources. And the second one is a minimum inference accuracy constraint, which states that we should guarantee a minimum accuracy to each, uh, to each video stream. That is to say, we should not starve any video stream. So in, in this scheduling problem, there are two key decisions that must be made. First, for each video stream, we, the scheduler must pick the retraining configuration. And second, the scheduler must also allocate resources between training and inference to uh, different video streams. More importantly, this needs, to be done, this needs to be done jointly. For instance, if a video stream gets more GPU time, it can pick a more expensive configuration to maximize its accuracy. Similarly, if a low-cost configuration is chosen for a specific model, then the scheduler can divert extra resources to other video streams so that they can maximize their accuracy. Let me give you a working example of how the scheduler must work. Assume this setup where we have two video streams which are uh, serviced by three GPUs here. For this example, we assume that the retraining must be done twice at a period of 120 seconds. So every 120 seconds, we check if there's a need for retraining or not. And for each video stream, we also have a choice of configurations to pick from. Note that for each camera, we have one expensive configuration which achieves a high accuracy and a slightly less uh, expensive configuration which gives you a lower accuracy. So let's look at how a fair scheduler would work in this scenario. For each retraining window, uh, it would pick the configuration which gives the highest accuracy and it would allocate all equal resources to all jobs. So this means that from the retraining table, we pick uh, the configurations which give us the highest accuracy and are the most expensive. And this is what the resource allocation over time would look like. Uh, since this is a fair scheduler, it would equally allocate resources to all jobs. However, as we can see in this plot here, which plots the inference accuracy over time, this is a poor choice of both resource allocation and choice of configurations. As you can see, retraining starts at t equal to zero for both jobs. Uh, it completes at t equal to 100, but it leaves very little time to exploit the model before it must be retrained again. The same pattern repeats in window two. Overall, we get a mean inference accuracy of 56%. So let's try to come up with a smarter schedule. How about to try to pick better hyperparameters and do a more intelligent resource allocation? So from the configuration table, let's pick the slightly lower accuracy configuration because they complete sooner. And on the resource allocation front, we prioritize job B first because it offers us the highest accuracy gain per unit time. And turns out this, this schedule does slightly better because now we are prioritizing job B and it completes sooner. We are able to get the retrain model sooner and we can use it for longer. 
Um, and in, in window two, we prioritize job A first because it offers us a higher accuracy gain per resource unit time. And overall, this gives us a mean inference accuracy of 73%. So what do we learn from this example? First, we should select configurations which maximize accuracy gain per unit resource time. Second, we should prioritize retraining tasks that yield a higher accuracy. And finally, we should minimize the impact on inference jobs by minimizing the resources that are taken from them in the first place. We use these insights to design our system, which we call Ekea. Ekea has four key components. First is the resource allocator, which we call the T scheduler, which is responsible for GPU time allocation and selecting the configurations for training and inference. Then we have the executors, which uh, actually run the inference and retraining jobs. We then have a pool of configurations and their correspondence resource accuracy profiles that we store in a database. And finally, we have a microprofiler which uh, produces accuracy resource estimates that guide the thief scheduler. Let's look at how data flows in our system. So we have incoming video streams which go to the thief scheduler. The thief scheduler triggers the microprofiler which fetches historic resource accuracy profiles and then runs a very aggressive hyperparameter sweep with very aggressive early stopping to produce accuracy estimates. Uh, the thief scheduler uses these estimates to produce resource and config allocations for the executors. And once the retraining completes, the retrain model is loaded into inference memory and the observed training profile is saved back to the pool of profiles. So in this talk, I'll briefly touch upon the thief scheduler and the microprofiler, but you can find more details in our paper. So the goal of the thief scheduler is to maximize the mean inference accuracy across all jobs. So it starts with a fair allocation, and then each job iteratively steals tiny quantums of resources from other jobs, evaluates all possible pairs of candidate configurations with the new resource allocation, and if the accuracy improves, it tries stealing another quantum, and it keeps doing so till the accuracy stops improving. As you can see, one of the key heuristics in the thief scheduler is accuracy prediction, which estimates the retrained accuracy for a given video stream. These predictions are made by microprofiling, which, in which we run a very short hyperparameter sweep with very aggressive early stopping and uh, configuration pruning. This allows EKIA to quickly estimate the expected accuracy gain if we were to train the model for a longer time. More details on the microprofiler are available in our paper. So we implement EKIA using Ray's actor model and we use NVIDIA's MPS as the resource broker to do, to do fine-grained resource allocation. We evaluate AK on two public data sets and two new data sets that we release uh, as a part of this paper. And we compare AK against multiple baselines, each of which retrains but uses a fair scheduler to equally allocate resources to all video streams, but with varying choices of configurations. So in, in our end-to-end -end benchmarks, we compare the end accuracy achieved by AK when, when it is serving a varied number of video streams with one GPU. This plot shows the mean accuracy across all video streams for the Cityscapes data set. Uh, as I mentioned, we use a fair scheduler, which we call uniform in the legend here. Um, each, each baseline uses a fixed configuration, so you can see that in the first uh, parameter in the brackets, and the second parameter is the uh, percent of resources that we allocate to inference versus training. So when the number of video streams are few, there are enough resources to run retraining without significantly impacting inference accuracy. In, in this situation, all schedulers, including AK, are able to run inference without any hindrance from retraining, and they achieve a similar accuracy. However, AK performs slightly better because it's able to pick better configurations which maximize its accuracy. However, as get resources more oversubscribed, uh, AKI is able to identify the situation and it prioritizes inference jobs first over retraining so that it can uh, maximize inference accuracy and it retrains only when it's feasible to do so. Similar trends are seen across data sets when we test AKI for varying resource counts with a fixed number of video streams. When fewer resources are provisioned, as you can see on the left side of the plots, the AKI identifies that retraining is not feasible and focuses on running just inference jobs. However, as more resources are provisioned, AKS starts allocating more resources to retraining and you see a higher accuracy. 
And in these results, we note that AK takes 4x fewer resources to achieve the same accuracy that a fair scheduler would. We also do an ablation study on AK to analyze how much configuration selection and resource allocation affect the performance of AK. So this is a graph comparing the inference accuracy with a varying number of GPUs. We have four bars here. The first one is a fair scheduler using a fixed configuration. This is the baseline. Then we add the microprofiler, but still use a fair scheduler. Then we use a thief scheduler, but with fixed configurations. And finally, which we have AK, which is the combination of the thief scheduler with the microprofiler. So when only two GPUs are provisioned, uh, resources are oversubscribed, and using just the T scheduler is not useful since the fixed expensive configurations take a long time to complete. In this case, the microprofiler is able to do better because it picks the best configuration and it's a, it, it improves the overall accuracy that we get. However, as more GPUs are provisioned, it creates an opportunity for the T scheduler to redirect surplus resources from video streams which do not need them to video streams which could actually use them. And in this case, using the T scheduler gives us higher accuracy than using just the microprofiler. So to, to summarize, continuous learning is an effective method of countering data depth, but it has an associated resource cost. AK intelligently allocates resources between training and inference to maximize this mean inference accuracy. And AK requires four x fewer resources to achieve the same inference accuracy um, as other baselines. We open source our code and release the data sets that we use on GitHub. I would encourage you to try it out. Um, and that's it. Thank you. I'll, I'll take any questions now.